Welcome to week three of our churchless church programs during this time of not being able to meet together as a church family. And so we're bringing you these programs to try to be a blessing to you in your homes. And uh, this evening, we are focusing on Palm Sunday. Palm Sunday, of course, is the kickoff of the most important week in the Christians' lives as far as history and the accomplishing of the work of Jesus Christ. This is called the week of Jesus' passion. It starts with Palm Sunday, and it ends with Resurrection Sunday, and it includes all of the important events in between those two Sundays. And so Passion Week is going to dominate our uh, efforts to be a blessing and, and minister to your family this week. This morning, in our morning program, we focused on the power of Palm Sunday, and we saw some of the Old Testament passages that predicted it, and then we saw the event occurring and the impact of that day with people from all over Israel congregating in Jerusalem. And if you didn't catch that program, perhaps you can go to our YouTube or Facebook uh, pages later this week and, uh, and see that. Uh, program on the power of Palm Sunday. This evening, we're going to uh, ask a question, uh, pose a question as if we were asking Jesus. And the question is, weeping on your coronation day? Why? Why would you be weeping on the day that Israel has welcomed you to Jerusalem and claimed that you are their Messiah and their King? And so we're going to be talking about that for a few moments this evening. And then this week uh, on our Facebook devotion, devotional thoughts, we're going to be exploring uh, the different events that occurred during Passion Week. And so we'll be looking at each day what happened in the life of Jesus Christ on that day in Jerusalem. And we'll be bringing those devotional thoughts to you throughout the week this week as we explore the week of Jesus Christ's Passion together. I hope you enjoyed a time this afternoon singing in the uh, home of the Simpsons and joining the Simpson family around their piano and singing some of the Psalms of the Faith, uh, songs of the faith, and I hope that was a blessing to you and uh, that that was a great day. So we're going to go ahead and uh, have a look at uh, the coronation of Jesus Christ on Palm Sunday and why Jesus Christ is found weeping that day. I'm going to uh, turn into my Bible over to Luke chapter number 19. If you have your Bibles, you may want to join me there. Uh, Luke chapter 19 gives us one of the gospel accounts of Jesus Christ on Palm Sunday. And so let me read a little bit of this account with us uh, today. Luke chapter 19, I'll begin reading in verse number 28. And when he had thus spoken, he went before ascending up to Jerusalem. And it came to pass when he was come nigh to Bethpage and Bethany at the mount called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples saying, go ye into the village over against you in the which at your entering ye shall find a colt tied whereon never man sat. Loose him and bring him hither. And if any man ask you, why do you loose him? Thus shall ye say unto him, Because the Lord hath need of him. And they that were sent went their way and found even as he had said unto them. And as they were loosing the colt, the owners thereof said unto them, Why loose ye the colt? And they said, The Lord hath need of him. And they brought him to Jesus. And they cast their garments upon the colt, and they set Jesus thereon. Well, I'm going to share with you some graphics and uh, some pictures of Jesus Christ, uh, of, of the area where Jesus Christ was coming into Jerusalem that day. So here on this first picture, we have a screenshot of the ancient city of Jerusalem and the cities nearby. And uh, this would be the, uh, the way it would have looked in the time of Jesus Christ, as far as these cities are concerned. Now, the Bible says that Jesus Christ had come up to Jerusalem, which means he had come from the Jordan River Valley, and he had come up to 
Jerusalem from Jericho. And that route would have brought him to the town of Bethany. This is where Mary and Martha lived and their brother Lazarus, uh, the man that Jesus uh, raised from the from the dead. And so our account in Luke tells us that Jesus Christ came to Bethany. Uh, other accounts tell us how he had spent the night there and had uh, been in, uh, with his good friends, Mary and Martha and Lazarus. And when the proper day came in the morning, they left Bethany and they came down the road on their way to Jerusalem. And Jesus sent two of his disciples into the nearby village to secure a colt, a little donkey uh, that had never been ridden. And uh, they did that in the city of Bethphage, and they secured that colt and brought uh, the colt out. They put their clothes on the colt, and then they put Jesus Christ sitting on the colt, and they began to, uh, he began to ride into Jerusalem. So right about here is the crest of the Mount of Olives. And as Jesus came over this crest, he would look down into the Kidron Valley. This is the Kidron Valley that runs uh, along the side of Jerusalem. And Jesus Christ would have looked across the Kidron Valley, and he would have seen the gates into the city. And those are the eastern gates. And he would have seen the temple on the temple platform. Of course, this is the temple platform and the temple would have been sitting there on the temple platform. That's the temple that Herod had uh, built. And, uh, and so Jesus and his disciples are, are viewing Jerusalem from that perspective. Now, let me just get rid of all of that. And uh, if you were to go to Jerusalem today and went to the same place where Jesus Christ was, this is what you would see looking from the crest of the Mount of Olives. This is the Kidron Valley running along here. The Mount of Olives is right over in that direction. You would have come over the Mount of Olives. You'd look down into the Kidron Valley. There's the gates, the eastern gates that you would see. They're sealed, closed. A lot of this land ground here. Um, has been elevated over the years that would not have been there at the time of Jesus Christ but the wall was there this is the wall that surrounds the temple platform and much of that wall is still there and of course the um, uh, what is called the western wall where the Jewish people pray is over on that side you access that from that uh, direction and uh, the, the western wall or the wailing wall where the Jews pray is right over there. Of course, this is a Muslim mosque that has been built on the temple platform, uh, but it's, uh, this is generally believed to be the area where the temple was standing there on the temple platform. So Jesus Christ coming over the Mount of Olives and cresting the Mount of Olives would have looked down into the, across the Kidron Valley at the city of Jerusalem. If you were in Jerusalem today and came down uh, that uh, route, you would come to uh, a location that has been set aside for viewing uh, the city of Jerusalem from the perspective that Jesus would have viewed it uh, coming on the colt. And you would come to the sanctuary of the Dominus Leave it, or I'm not sure how that's pronounced in its, uh, in its I believe it's from the Latin, but what it means is God wept. One of the profound things that occurred on Palm Sunday as Jesus Christ rode into Jerusalem was that he stopped and wept over the city of Jerusalem. And so uh, a, um, a piece of ground there in that area has been secured so that People, pilgrims can go to this location and have a viewing platform where they can gather and they can look over to the temple platform. There's the wall around the temple. There's the eastern gates and the temple would have set here. And they could view Jerusalem uh, from the perspective that Jesus would have viewed Jerusalem on Palm Sunday. So Jesus Christ is crested over the Mount of Olives, 
He's looking down across the Kidron Valley up to the city of Jerusalem. The temple in its all of its beauty, the glistering white temple uh, standing there would have been a beautiful sight in front of him. There are crowds and crowds of people. Uh, we saw this morning uh, some of the passages, read some of the passages in the Gospels that talked about the number of people that came together that day. Uh, they were in innumerable multitude, one gospel writer says. Another says they trod upon one another. They were so packed into the streets and the areas uh, where they could uh, move around that they were packed together and stepping on each other's feet. It was a packed crowd. It was a very emotional and a dynamic event occurring as Jesus Christ came on the very day that the prophet Daniel, uh, 600 years before Christ was born, had given the day that Jesus Christ would be presented as the Messiah to Israel. And on that very day, Jesus Christ is riding in on a uh, donkey and Israel has come out to welcome him as their king. A very dramatic event. This is um, another uh, angle from this same viewing platform, again, where you can see the gates that Jesus would have gone through as he went across the valley and up into the gates and the area where the temple would have stood. This is an amazing, amazing event in the life of Jesus Christ. And so I'm going to set that aside and come back to um, my Bible and look a little bit more at what happened this day in the account uh, that Luke has for us here. Luke tells us that Jesus Christ rode in to Jerusalem that day on a donkey. And in verse 37, and when he was come nigh, even now at the descent of the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice for all the mighty works that they had seen, saying, Blessed be the King that cometh in the name of the Lord, peace in heaven and glory in the highest. And some of the Pharisees among the multitude said unto him, Master, rebuke thy disciples. And he answered and said unto them, I tell you that if these should hold their peace, that the stones would immediately cry out. Do you have an imagination? Can, can you feel the emotion in the air that day as the crowds of people have gathered into Jerusalem? They've come out of Jerusalem when they heard that Jesus was approaching from Bethany. They've come down and filled the Kidron Valley. Jesus comes over the crest of the Mount of Olives on a donkey, riding down into the Kidron Valley. The people rush and uh, to where Jesus is, dropping palm branches in front of the donkey, throwing their cloaks, uh, their outer garments down to create a carpet for the donkey to carry the king on as they approach the gate into Jerusalem. They're shouting that Jesus Christ is the son of David, that he is their Messiah, their king, and they're rejoicing. The noise was so loud. The cheers were so loud. The emotion was so thick in the air that the Pharisees, the religious leaders who were against Jesus and against what was happening this day, they said to Jesus, you need to rebuke your disciples. They're calling you the son of David. They're calling you the king. You need to quiet down your disciples and rebuke them for what they're saying. And Jesus Christ said, if I, if I talk, if I talk them down and quiet them down, the very stones along the road will cry out in victory because I, the King, the Son of David, am coming in fulfillment of prophecy to offer myself as the Messiah today. The stones will cry out because of the importance of this great event today. But then something strange happens. In verse number 41, the Bible says, And when he was come near, he beheld the city and wept over it. He wept 
on his coronation day. Why did he weep? This is a profound subject, and I've invited our new assistant pastor, Ryan Colmus, to join us on our program today to discuss the, uh, the event of Jesus weeping over the city of Jerusalem on Palm Sunday. Uh, Ryan and his wife, uh, Christina, and their daughter, Leah, will be joining us here at Community Baptist Church in about two months, uh, but uh, they have, uh, Ryan's been willing to come and join us today uh, by way of uh, calling in to our uh, program, and so we're going to welcome him to the set, and uh, Ryan and I are going to discuss some things about Jesus weeping over Jerusalem. It is a joy to have Ryan Colmus join us on set today so that we can discuss a little bit about Palm Sunday. And uh, Ryan is sitting in California, and it's a, a joy to welcome him. Ryan, good to see you. Thank you, Pastor. It's good to be with you. I'm looking forward to you joining us here permanently here in just a couple of months. Hey, we, we cannot wait. We cannot wait. We want to get there. <laughs> I have enjoyed uh, the, the little glimpses of you, your wife, and Leah uh, on Facebook and uh, the, the little bit of interaction we've been able to have. And uh, it's been a blessing uh, to get to know your family uh, on a gradual basis here. You'll we're have to glad, tell Leah glad. I said hi. I will, I will do that. I will do that. She's, uh, she's uh, over in the other room with Chris, but uh, maybe, maybe some other time. <laughs> Uh, that picture of her in that field of poppies, flowers there in California was beautiful. You know what? That was amazing. We've never been up there before, but uh, just all over, the poppies were just, you know, full in the uh, in the field there. So it was pretty neat to, to see. It was gorgeous. Well, Ryan, as you know, we've been discussing Palm Sunday today and uh, the um, the events that surrounded Jesus Christ coming into Jerusalem. I want to uh, go in my Bible over to uh, Luke chapter 19 uh, and pick up the story uh, that we've been talking about. And uh, something that I have not mentioned on the uh, program this morning in our morning service uh, or thus far in our evening um, is the verses that in which Jesus Christ wept. And I, I find this to be to be astounding because this is Jesus coronation day. Uh, he is being hailed as king in Israel, the Messiah. And, uh, and yet in Luke chapter 19 in verse number 41, I read that when he was come near, he beheld the city and wept over it, saying, if thou hadst known, even thou, at least in this thy day, the things which belong unto thy peace. But now they are hid from thine eyes. For the days shall come upon thee that thine enemies shall cast a trench about thee and compass thee round and keep thee in on every side and shall lay thee even with the ground and thy children within thee. And they shall not leave in thee one stone upon another because thou knewest not the time of thy visitation. That just seems so astounding and out of place in light of what is happening on Palm Sunday and the, the uh, crowds of people that are coming in. And when, when I've studied that passage, Ryan, the, the word wept there does not mean a, just a, a kind of a, a light uh, a crying about something or a, a couple of tears, but it means to wail. It means to just weep and sob. And so I get this picture of Jesus Christ on this donkey, and he's weeping and sobbing as he comes near to Jerusalem. How does that, uh, how does that passage hit you when you think of Palm Sunday? You know, we, we think of Palm Sunday and we think of the buzz that was around uh, that time and the, and the people and the excitement that they had. Uh, you know, Jesus was coming in on the donkey and uh, fulfilling uh, prophecy in the, from the Old Testament. And, uh, you know, just to see what the situation was at the time and the oppression of the, uh, of the Roman Empire upon the J Jews there in Jerusalem and uh, just the buzz that was taking place. You know, people had experienced the miracles of Jesus. They had experienced... 
uh, uh, maybe the raising of Lazarus, maybe the feeding of the 5,000. They, they, they had seen maybe some healings and, or heard about them. Um, and, and they knew the authority with which Jesus spoke. And, uh, it, you know, the celebration of the Passover was not uh, far down the road, just a few days. And, um, and, and they saw all of these things. And, and uh, then they thought about their current situation. And they see Jesus coming into Jerusalem. And I, and I just uh, believe that they probably thought that he was going to deliver them uh, from the Roman oppression that they were dealing with of, of the day, of that, of that current situation there. And uh, Jesus wept. Uh, we, we see that there in that verse. And, uh, and the reason is because that is not at all what Jesus was there to do uh, on that day. The the um, he the conversation goes on the the weeping and Jesus Christ responding to the weeping and to, to kind of follow um, what you just said about the political ramifications of wanting to be delivered from the Roman authorities and from the present day problems politically and uh, in their country and then Jesus turns around and says you know there's a day coming when when you, you think it's bad now with Rome there's a day coming when when you're going to be totally destroyed by Rome. What's that all about? Yeah, you know, and, and when Jesus wept, you know, you wonder about maybe what he was thinking about and what, what, uh, what he was thinking when, when he saw that, uh, that city before him and, uh, and, and the things that were in front of uh, Jerusalem there. And, you know, we know that in 70 AD that uh, the Roman Empire came back in and, and completely leveled the city. And was he thinking about that? Was he thinking about the destruction that was to take place there in the future? Uh, maybe even more you know, future events as far as the diaspora and the spreading of the Jews and then, you know, even in, into Germany and, and Hitler and, 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 you know, maybe even all the way to end times when, when, uh, when he comes back into that Eastern gate, uh, you know, he, he may have been thinking of, of those things. We're not sure, obviously, but, uh, but just to think of those things and to see the destruction of, of, of that city to come uh, and to know that they had a choice to uh, worship him as he was. Uh, or worship him as uh, maybe what they wanted him to be uh, for their own purposes and for their own reasons. Uh, you know, maybe they looked at Jesus as uh, their their get out of jail free card. I don't know. Uh, but you know, thinking about their current situation, they they were just thinking too small. Uh, they didn't realize what Jesus had come to do for them. They thought that he had just come to deliver them from their current uh, earthly situation. But what he had actually come to do was to deliver them. Uh, from their spiritual uh, 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 sin and from their separation from God, uh, and and uh, they just didn't have that realization. Yeah, yeah. If 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 what they wanted, uh, and they did, wanted that political deliverance, uh, boy, what a colossal failure a Palm Sunday was. If that was God's plan, uh, because as you said, Israel has had no end of political turmoil from that day until today and uh the that's political right. turmoil is is thick you, you think of even what jesus was coming in on he came in on a, on a donkey which was yes prophesied but you know you think about um you know what what would a king come in on if he was coming to defeat an army uh if he was coming to overthrow a government uh would he enter into the city on a donkey no. Um, I, I think maybe not. Maybe it would have been a horse, or maybe it would have been a camel, or maybe it would have, would have been with, an, with, with a large uh, entourage of an army uh, to come and do something like that. But he didn't. He came in on a, cam on a, on a donkey, uh, which is a very peaceful thing to do. Um, and and they, just didn't, they just didn't see that. Their eyes were blinded, um, and I think they, yeah. uh, they, they did it willing, willingly of themselves to, to yeah. not have that realization. Well, there certainly was a misunderstanding as to whether or not this is political and, and whether or not this is going to uh, bring the political uh, hope that they long for. Now, in, in, the, um, in the verses that we just read, Jesus Christ made the statement, If thou hast known even thou, at least in this thy day, the things which belong unto thy peace. Now, if it was political, and if they were looking for political peace, then certainly it was a failure, as Jesus went on to describe, that, uh, that they're going to have a total destruction of their city in their lifetime. They were under the imminent judgment of God that would bring a total collapse of their culture and their city of Jerusalem. 
And Jesus Christ is speaking about peace. Um, could this peace just be political? Or do you see in this, in this peace that Jesus Christ was b- desirous of bringing to them, is there something else in there? You know, they, 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 they wanted him to come, uh, and he came in on the donkey to, uh, to show his entrance of peace. Uh, but they didn't want peace. They they really wanted they really wanted war. And and maybe the the end for them was would would have been peace if that would have been the case. Uh, you know, physically at the time. Um, but what what they actually wanted was an overthrow of that government, politi- yeah. politically speaking. Um, and what Jesus came to bring to them was spiritual peace and peace in their lives. Uh, and, and you know, we we know that at the end of the week he would go and be crucified and, and buried and. Uh, and then he, he would rise again, um, and that brings uh, to the world, uh, and not th- just to those people at that time uh, in Jerusalem, but to the world, uh, the option for peace uh, in their hearts, and their in, in the option for peace for eternity, uh, which is a much bigger thing than than they were thinking about at the time. You know, I think about uh, we we I spoke just very briefly in a in a in a clip that I that uh, that you showed last week about uh, the mm-hmm. time that that we had our children uh, and they were in the hospital and, and they were born very early. And, and uh, my daughter was one pound, five ounces and my son was one pound, seven ounces. And um, just uh, something that could have stirred up a lot of angst uh, and something that could have been uh, destructive in our lives. Had we not decided to cling to God instead of push him away. Um, and, and at that time, we needed to make sure that we were clinging to God. We had our Bibles uh, in the hospital room every single chance that we that we were in there, uh, and we were reading and we were praying, uh, and we did, we just made that decision that we needed to cling to God and to cling to the peace that He offers, uh, mm-hmm. rather than push away. Because if we would have, we would have had angst. We would have had uh, destruction on our own lives. We would not have had peace at that time. And and looking back at it now, I'm I'm glad that we made the decision to stay close to God. You know, James 4, 8 talks about uh, how we need to uh, uh, stay close to him. It says that that uh, uh, that if we're close to him, then he'll be close to us. Well, it's us moving. Uh, yeah. it, it's us moving, it's not him moving. Uh, he yeah. is immovable. So uh, yeah. if, if we're moving, it's it's on our, our, our end. Um, so we see the peace that, uh, that he offers and the peace that he offered even to the people of that day. Um, and they were excited on the day of, of, of him coming into Jerusalem, uh, but then just a few days later, we see that changes. Yes. You know, when you talk about peace, when you were saying that about peace, I was, my mind jumped over to Romans uh, where the, uh, the Bible uses that word peace and speaking of having peace with God. Um, Romans chapter five, verse one says, therefore being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. We have peace with God. You ever thought much, uh, Ryan, you were just talking about how in the hospital room, how you clung to God and his word and and experienced the, the peace of God in your heart during a time of great uh, uh, difficulty for you and your, and, and your wife, uh, Christina. And it was, um, I can't imagine, uh, the the difficulty of that time and yet you found uh the the peace of god was real to you but romans chapter 5 talks about having peace with god and um you ever thought much about the the relationship of peace with god and peace of god and uh and how that comes to bear in our lives exactly and and the reason that we can have peace um in our lives because of God is because of the, the fact that, that, that he came for, uh, for us first and, and he came to die on that cross for us. Uh, and we can have peace with God because of Jesus Christ and what he did for us on that cross that day. Um, we have the option in our lives to have peace with God or, or not. Uh, and the way that we have peace with God is by accepting him and having, uh, what Romans five, one says, uh, being justified by faith. Uh, we, we are justified by faith and then we have uh, peace with God through Jesus Christ. It says through Jesus Christ because Jesus Christ was the, uh, was the conduit for that. He, he was the one that went to the cross. He was the one that, 
that had the nails uh, pierced through his hands and through his feet, the, 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 the crown of thorns, the, the spear in his side, he was the one that, that uh, went and, and died and was buried. Uh, and then he rose again that third day, praise God. Um, and, and he is the reason for our peace. And he is the, is the one where we have that choice thereby uh, to have peace with God or not. Amen. Hey, there's another, there's another part to this story in Luke 19 that I'm, I'm curious as to how you would relate that to what you just said about the peace, uh, the peace with God uh, that has to precede the peace of God in our lives in turmoil. Uh, Jesus was sobbing, he was weeping, and, and he was explaining uh, why he was weeping. And, and he said that they did not understand the things that belong to thy peace. They didn't understand how to enter into a relationship where they have peace with God, and therefore they'll never have the peace of God in their lives. And in that statement, uh, he said, because thou knewest not the time of thy visitation. What is he talking about, the time of thy visitation? You know, I, I, I believe that they were, we've heard the phrase that they're too, um, I'm not sure how it goes, whether it's earthly minded to be any heavenly good or heavenly minded to be any earthly good. <laughs> But uh, I think that they were too earthly minded to be any heavenly good. He heavenly good. Uh, I think that's how we could we could do that. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, you know, the, the the time of visitation, the word visitation. Uh, I looked that up the other day in, in Strong's dictionary, and it just says the act by which God looks into and searches out the ways, deeds, character of men in order to judge them uh, their lot accordingly. Uh, mm -hmm. And it was a time of testing for them. Uh, and and Jesus came into Jerusalem. Uh, with with one purpose, and uh, and they saw him coming t uh, to be in that that city at that time for a different purpose, uh, and it was really a time of testing for them, for them to uh, decide who God was to them and who Jesus was to them. Was he a man uh, who was going to deliver them from the earth, from that earthly situation, from that oppression, from that Roman oppression, or was he their God who they they should worship uh, regardless? of of his his mm. purpose uh, and and we know that his purpose is much greater than their purpose and and much better for them uh, yes. than what they were hoping for uh, so that time of visitation was that time of testing that time that they uh, they had no idea what what Jesus was there for and they they probably should have should have had a better idea they probably should have had a, a better uh, uh, idea that they needed to worship him as he was rather than worship him for what the, he could do for them I like the way you said that, the way you phrased that with regards to God testing them and, and visiting them in the sense of coming uh, into their lives to test them, to weigh out uh, what they really thought and how they really felt. And that's, that's, um, that'd be an interesting thing to explore in, uh, in some further discussion sometime. But let's relate that back. How, how, when, when, uh, when he was... Uh, initially explaining his weeping, he used the phrase, if thou hadst known, if you only knew. Talk about that. What's he talking about? They, they were so surface. They were, they were, they were thinking so surface. Um, and they were, they were focused on that surface. Um, and, and, uh, and, and if he, if they only knew what, what he was there to do, they, but they were they they, they didn't care. Uh, they they were so focused on what their um, their idea of a savior was. Their idea of a savior was that earthly uh, deliverance from that Roman Empire. Um, and, but Jesus didn't come to serve their personal agendas. You know, he didn't come to start a revolt for them. Uh, he actually says in Matthew twenty two, uh, he's in verse twenty one. It says, "Render therefore unto Caesar the things that, things that are Caesar's, uh, and unto God the thing that, yeah. things that are God's." Um, and, and so he gave him instruction to uh, to be submissive to the authority that was that was in place, um, and and so, but they didn't think about that. They were just thinking surface. They they uh, they blinded themselves from uh, the truth. Uh, and as Jesus right is riding into J Jerusalem, you know that excitement, uh, 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 it just blinded them. And, and uh, you know they had their palm branches. You know palm branches are a sign of of uh, of you know 
uh, the king coming, right? Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and the palm branches, you know, really, as we think about uh, Palm Sunday and, and what he had really come to do, uh, and, and in our own lives, we need to th really think about, um, you know, maybe self-reflection -refle rather than celebration. Um, mm -hmm. and, and just know that, uh, that Jesus is not our get-out-of-jail-free card. Uh, you know, he was weeping over them. He was, uh, they were worshiping him, him for all the wrong reasons. Uh, uh, but, but they just wanted him to uh, you know, almost be a puppet for them to fight back against the Romans and, and kind of uh, 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 just get back at what, what the oppression was of the day. Yeah, I think that is so powerful in, in, uh, in comparing that or um, applying that to where we live today. As you just said, uh, that we need to be more uh, reflective than celebratory, perhaps. Uh, Jesus Christ saying to those, that generation of Israeli people, that if you'd only known, if you only knew what, what, uh, what is involved in peace, if you only knew what is involved with the peace that God is coming to visit you, to test you, to try you, to, to, uh, to reveal where you are in your relationship with God and, and how God wants to have peace with you and your sin uh, be resolved, your sin debt to God be resolved, where you can no longer be his enemy, but become his child. And he wants to have peace with you. And if you'd only known, but you don't get it. And I wonder, is that a, a, a commentary on our Christianity today, our country, the state of the unsaved, and, and, and maybe even at times the state of the saved today, if we only knew what God was really doing, if we'd only see it from God's perspective. I agree, Pastor, and I believe that a lot of times, even Christians today, uh, you know, do we do we worship, do Christians worship God today in vain? Uh, you know, you see different simple examples, uh, celebrities and sports stars, stars and, and, and prosperity gospel type, type people. Uh, you know, you see, see people and, and how they, uh, quote unquote worship God, um, and is it really for their own purposes and their own maybe uh, financial benefit, uh, or is it really worshipful? Is it really true worship of of God? Um, and, and today, you know, we we're in a time that is a difficult time, and and uh, you know we see uh, what is going on around us, and uh, we just need to make sure that as John fifteen five, five says that that we're abiding in Him. It says, "I am the vine, and ye are the branches." He that abideth in, him, uh, in, in me and I in him, and the same bringeth forth much fruit. Uh, and then it says, for without me, ye can do nothing. You know, we think about that last phrase, for without me, ye can do nothing. Uh, yeah. It's important for us to remember that whatever our current state is, without Jesus, we can do nothing. And, and, uh, and we need to make sure that we are continually worshiping him as he is and not as we want him to be. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we, we want him sometimes to... Uh, take away our pain. We want him to sometimes alleviate our financial situation. We want him sometimes to uh, uh, change a, a relational situation for us. Uh, and, and we can pray to, the, to that end. We really can. And sometimes God will bless. Sometimes God will not uh, do some of those things. And it will still be a blessing to us after a while, maybe, when we figure out what God is really doing. Mm. Uh, but we need to make sure that we're worshiping him as he is and that, that we're not worshiping him as, as we want him to be. Um, and, and remember that uh, in, in our lives that um, we don't need anything but him. There's a super, yeah. super simple chorus, and it just says, he's all I need. Yeah. He's all I need. Jesus is all I need. And we need to make sure that that is uh, our, our truth today. Amen. Well, Ryan, Palm Sunday's got some amazing things going on. And uh, just the, the picture of Jesus sobbing because man doesn't get it just really resonates in my heart and, and makes me, as you said, the need for reflection, makes me ask myself, do I really get it? Do I really know what God's doing? Do I really understand the heart and the actions of God in the world around me right now? Do I see things from God's perspective or am I so self-focused that all I can see is me and the impact of events on my life rather than the bigger picture of seeing God accomplishing something 
that is far bigger than just me. Palm Sunday's got some amazing things to meditate and think on. Amen. Well, Ryan, thanks for being with us today. So good to see you and uh, look forward to uh, a couple of months from now when we'll be able to have these conversations uh, face to face in the same room and um, looking forward to God's blessings on uh, Community Baptist Church family uh, through the ministry that uh, you and Christina will have here as you join us in ministry. And thank you so much for being with us today. Amen. Thank you so much, Pastor. Appreciate it. Glad to be here. Palm Sunday is certainly an interesting day. The events that occurred that day are, are, are varied and, uh, and gives us different perspectives to consider, to think uh, how the average Jewish person was thinking, and then to turn around and to get into the mind of Jesus and hear what he was thinking some profound thoughts. I hope you enjoyed Ryan Colmus and his visit with us today. I sure appreciate him taking the time uh, to be a part of our program today. Now, throughout the week this week, uh, I'm going to be sharing some devotional thoughts coming from Passion Week in the life of Jesus Christ. Each day, I'll be posting a devotion, a video devotion on uh, the events that occurred that day in Jesus' life. So tomorrow, on Monday, there'll be a devotion that will focus on some of the events that occurred on Monday of Passion Week. And then on Tuesday, uh, the devotion will follow the events that happened on Tuesday. And throughout the week, I hope that will be a blessing to you. To help you with that, uh, we have uh, produced a little outline. It's called The Week of Jesus Christ Passion. It's not the kind of booklet you would read, but rather it's more of an outline that goes through the week of Jesus Christ Passion and makes an attempt at dividing all of the events up into the days uh, throughout the week and showing you what happened and where you can read about it in your Bible. And so I'll be referring to this uh, in the devotions that I'll be bringing over the next few days. Now we have uh, produced this as a uh, PDF file that you can download and print, and you can find this on our church website, and you can go to uh, cbcforme.org forward slash hope, and uh, under uh, the Sunday evening, uh, Palm Day, uh, Palm Sunday um, section of that page, you'll find uh, this, uh, a link to download this little uh, outline. And let me encourage you to consider as a family or as an individual, if you don't have family living in your home with you, to take this little outline, to take your Bible and uh, with your family to read and talk about uh, what happened in Jesus' life on that day and maybe watch the devotion together and then discuss those things as a family. One of the great things that can come out of this season of not being able to meet together in church and kids being out of school, a lot of people being out of work, is that we can restart family worship if that has gone by the wayside in your home. Uh, you can Carve out some time to focus on God as a family, read the scriptures, and discuss the scriptures together. And if that comes out of this time of, of uncertainty, that will be a good thing. And I encourage you to consider doing that this week. One thing you can do to help us is to, uh, to uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you're over on our YouTube channel today and you haven't subscribed to it, maybe you could do that for us. Or if you're on our Facebook page, if you could like that, that helps us to be able to reach more people through uh, the media that we have available to us. Next week, we'll be coming to you by way of uh, programming, uh, video programming again. And so 10 o'clock next Sunday morning and 6 o'clock next Sunday evening, we'll be celebrating Easter. And uh, we hope you'll come and join us, be a part of that great celebration together. God bless you, and you have a great Sunday evening. I want to see heaven. Thank you for joining us for part of a Sunday service at Community Baptist Church. I hope to meet you soon. May God impress His love upon your heart this week. I want to see heaven.